We start by uploading the new settings to the data HIU. Domestic hot water is at 45 degrees C. We have the keep warm temperature at 35 degrees C. Switching to the output view, we can see the data coming out of the HIU. Um, domestic hot water temperature in blue, shown at about 12.9 degrees at the moment. This is because we've run some cold water through the HIU before the test. The district heating temperature is about 72 degrees C. This is in red. Domestic hot water flow rate, green, is at the bottom of zero. We're not running taps at the moment. And the district heating return temperature in yellow, that's also at about 13 degrees C. Now initially not much happens because the unit's only allowing very small amounts of water into the plate heat exchanger to warm it up. Now we can see the start of that to happen now with a slight drop in the district heating return temperature. Um, this is probably due to a small amount of cold water in the bottom of the heat exchanger uh, being expelled. You also see a slight blip in the flow temperature rising as, the, as some more flow is brought into the HIU. Currently there's no effect on domestic hot water temperature. This is because it takes some time for the little bit of heat that's been let in to dissipate through the plate heat exchanger. But now we can see that starting to rise. This will level off until two minutes later the unit lets another small amount of water into the HIU. Okay, now we can see domestic hot water temperature has leveled off and we can see the second pulsed input coming in now. So there's another little rise in domestic hot water temperature. You'll notice that the district heating flow temperatures are dropping. That's because of the heat losses from the branch pipework connecting up to the HIU. They're losing heat quicker than effectively the water in the HIU. Now we can see the second pulse is, is rising and it's starting to level off. Now, this is 10 minutes later, you can see how there's been a few pulses now and the domestic hot water temperature has crept up above the target. The district heating flow temperature has also dropped, but we can see the pulses clearly. The district heating return temperature, this is still very cold, it's still in the region of uh, 12 degrees C. So the water that we're letting into the heat exchanger hasn't yet made it all the way through to the other side of the heat exchanger. Some, some point soon we should start to see a rise in the return temperature. Um, here we go. If we skip to 15 minutes later, we can see we can see the returns now starting to rise. So as each pulse of water is let in to the plate, um, a small amount comes out of the return. That return temperature is now rising. Now this will happen gradually with pulses let in every two minutes until um, domestic hot water temperature is maintained at keep warm temperature and the return temperature is also at that temperature, at which point the system will, will equalise. Now we see here the return is creeping up. We set our keep warm temperature to about 35 degrees C. So once the return reaches 35, the unit shouldn't let much water in at all. It's waiting for the hot water temperature to settle down to 35 as well. Now, if we skip to 15 minutes later, you can see how this has happened. The return temperature, once it's achieved 35 degrees C, the unit stops letting in really any much any more heat at all. Until that is, the domestic hot water temperature dropped down to the region of 35, at which point the unit starts letting in a small amount again. You can see here a typical pulse where the now the domestic hot water temperature and the district heating return temperature are almost identical. Now the way we achieve a guaranteed return temperature set point of say 35 degrees C can be shown here on the 3D model of the HIU. 
If you zoom in a little bit, you'll see the two stepper motors, one used for hot water and one used for central heating. Now these allow us to perform very fine movements and as well as very fast movements, letting through highly controlled volumes of hot water. Now the water flows in through the top of the plate heat exchanger, down through the heat exchanger, out and through the stepper motors, up through where the heat meter is fitted and through the security valve, back up to the return. Now the benefits of being able to guarantee return temperatures as low as 35 is it reduces heat losses on the pipework as well as significantly increasing plant room efficiency. CHP plant rooms, heat pumps all rely on low return temperatures in order to work. Now we recently sent the unit off for testing in Sweden under the new HIU testing standards. Now on our website at heatweb.com forward slash wiki we've written an article covering the standards in detail as well as showing our test results and an analysis of various tests. Now you see here a picture of the unit on test in the test house in Sweden. The tests themselves have been funded by DEC um, in order to for the first time put some standards in place against which HIUs can be held accountable. Now they're, they're quite detailed to test so we won't go through them individually here um, other than to scan to a few graphs which will show you how the data HIU performed next to their other well-known brands on the market. Now the test shows a hot water draw off test coming out of keep warm mode. So it's basically a tap opening, um, the flow rate increasing as the tap is opened and then leveling off and the tap is left running at the same flow rate throughout the test. Now, Initially as the tap is opened the HIUs respond letting heat in and the temperature of the domestic hot water increases. The idea is to get to a set point of 55 degrees C and maintain that throughout the draw off. Now the HIU, the data in red here will see achieves set point within a degree of 55 degrees C before the tap is even fully opened. It then stays within a degree C throughout the entire test leveling off to within a degree of target temperature. Other HIUs, some of them perform better than others, with some achieving target within 20 seconds, within 30 seconds, others taking longer. Now if we roll down to another graph, we'll see another feature of the HIU that was detailed in the test, which is the self-learning. Now the HIU learns to respond um, to changes in differential pressure. So this is a test showing hot water draw off. The initial draw off we see a spike in the domestic hot water temperatures. Now this is caused because we've increased the differential pressure across the system to two and a half bar. By the time we get to the third draw off the unit has learned the differential pressure and has adjusted itself. So from here on in the unit will maintain steady temperatures. Another part of the test was to do with VART, VWART calculations. These are basically to give you an analysis of the expected retur average return temperatures by volume that you can expect to see, which is a key indicator of how you plant room efficiency. Now the first table here shows the test results with the keep warm temperature at 55 degrees C. So that's maintaining water in the heat exchanger at set point. Now it's, so it's normal in installations to drop the keep warm set point to something in the region of 45 or 35 degrees C. Now this could, the effect of this can be shown in the second table here, where the VART calculation dropped to in the region of 33, 34 degrees C. Thank you very much for listening.